one of the things that separates a markup language like HTML from a programming language like JavaScript is that in a programming language, you can make decisions. You can't do that in HTML. Whereas in JavaScript, you can actually see what somebody is doing and then have the JavaScript take an action based on what's happening. That is one of the key differences between a programming language and a markup language. So what we're going to do in this video is look at one of the most basic decision making mechanisms built into JavaScript and many other languages, something called the if statement. So we're back in our uh, well, Dreamweaver CS4 in this case, but again, you can use any text editor. And you see I've pre-built the basic structure of an if statement. You have the keyword if, two brackets, and then two curly brackets. So the best way to explain this is to actually just jump into it. If three is less than four, and in here I'm going to write some code. So I'm just going to say console dot log and I'll say I don't know indeed it is so let's take a look at the console and see how that uh, turns out so there we go indeed it is so basically the way the if statement works is that anything in between these brackets if that's true then anything in between these brackets that follow it will uh, will happen now, if this was false, I'll just do the opposite, 3 is greater than 4, then JavaScript will go, ah, this is false, and it will skip whatever code is in between these two curly braces. So let's try this out. As you can see, it disappears. If statements are exceptionally important, and you're going to be using them all the time. You're going to be using them, for instance, in a conjunction with a function. So let's use a function that we used earlier. Remember index of. So we're going to go string str, our string variable. And we're going to say index, oops, index of. And we're going to look for the letter e. So if the string, the far string rather, contains the letter e, then we're going to run this. Otherwise, it won't. So let's just we save that. Let's run that in a script. Indeed, it is. So let's say we say index, you know, of no space. Obviously, there's no space in here. So we're going to run this again. So we're going to go OK. And you can see it doesn't fire off. Let me show you another example. And I'm going to say A. Now, you, you would expect that since A is not part of hello, right, string hello, it, uh, you'd figure it would return false. When I mean return, you know, remember a function returns a value, so the index of function would return a value. The first time it said it was 1, right? So you figure A, we remember last time if we did string index of A, it returns a, a minus 1. Now, JavaScript is an interesting language. It's a great language, but sometimes it's kind of weird. So typically, minus 1, you'd figure it would mean false, but it doesn't in JavaScript, unfortunately. So even though, in this case, there's no uh, value, there's no A in the string, for some reason, the if will still fire off as if it is true. And then we'll see this, right? Well, let's run this, see index. Oh, it's true. So for some reason, index of... If it sees minus one, if I, if if rather sees minus one, because we know the index of a returns minus one. Like I'll show you what I mean by that if I go here. Console dot index of minus one. You know what? I'll make it so it's not so confusing for you guys. So, uh, ouch. See, it shouldn't it shouldn't do that, but whatever. So we got console.log.string index a so let's run this see you see that index of returns minus one when it doesn't find uh, a value right so that sucks so it's uh, 
it's no good. So what we can do, we can change this. So it gives me an opportunity to uh, to change this. So I can go, okay, we could do this. We could go minus one. Oh, let me just get in here. Minus one double equal. So this double equal operator, this basically is called a comparison operator because it compares this with this. So we know that from... Uh, down here, we know this will output minus one. So if minus one is equal to minus one, we say console.log, ouch. So we're going to do that. Let me just erase this. So let me uh, refresh that. Don't worry, I'm going to get back and I'll explain those things a little bit. So ouch does come out, of course. So let me explain this. Now, these double arrows, this is an operator because it operates on, right? Remember, we had operators like the dot operator and equals. This is the assignment operator because it assigns a value. We're assigning the value of hello to the var string. In this situation, we have double equals. What we're actually doing is it's called a comparison operator. We're asking JavaScript to compare what's on this side to whatever's on this side. So because it's in an if, we're going to get an evaluate, we're going to get a, if it's going to evaluate that. So it's like, we're basically saying compare minus one versus the output of string of index of and tell us what it is. And in this case, because they are equal, it will be true. So because it's true, this is run. I hope that makes sense. If I said minus two, that should be false and we should get nothing in the console. Let's try that out. See that? Nothing appears, right? Because this, we know, outputs minus 1. So let's go back to minus 1, and we go index of E. So we know that this will output uh, index position of uh, 0, 1. But since this is not true, it will also be false as well. I hope that makes sense. Think about it. If not, play with it at home. So let's try it out again. See, ouch, right? So we know that that is true, right? Hold a second. That shouldn't have been true. Let me try that again. Let me say that. 